SMT Nation, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be discussing a topic that a lot of people have been asking me for. Specifically, there was a Patreon supporter. Big shout out to Teddy. Thanks for all your support of the Patreon page and the YouTube channel here. He asked me to do a QCI video. Now, I already did a QCI video for T-Mobile. And I'll go ahead and put like a card up here or here. I forget where it goes on the videos. But... Uh, and I'll also put a link in the description for that one. That explains kind of the QCI or the priority levels based on tasks and different things that people do on their phones. And it also covers some of the plans and stuff like that and how they do tiers of priority. We're going to be doing the same thing in this video. We're going to focus on AT&T. So Teddy, big shout out to you. Thanks for requesting this video and this topic. And thank you for inspiring me to do this. So let's uh, go ahead and get that going. First thing that we got to do before we actually get into all the details of this video is we have to indicate that this is for AT&T's current network at the time of this recording. It's March of 2022, and I don't know when you're watching this, but it's very possible that these QCI things could have changed by now. It all kind of depends on a couple of things. Number one is, are they going to continue to use the same QCI levels and designations on their network core? and how they manage plans and tiers and access. Of course, with 5G standalone, all of that can change. So that being said, you know, take that as an important key element before we do any further dives. This is for the LT-based network, even the non-standalone 5G, the way this works is all the same. Once we get into standalone 5G, it's probably gonna look different. Things will be handled differently. What actually is QCI? QCI is essentially a device's place within the network queue, where it fits in based on whether or not it's postpaid or it's prepaid or even within postpaid. Is it an entry level starter plan or is it something that's like a middle of the road plan or is it something that's a high priority plan? You know, in case like something with AT&T would be like, you know, consumer elite or business elite or even first net. So the baseline QCI level for AT&T is QCI 8. Same thing with Verizon, same thing with T-Mobile. The way that QCIs work is that the number, as it gets lower, actually gives it higher priority. So QCI 8 is the baseline. One higher priority level or higher priority tier would be QCI 7. There is one higher than that for AT&T and it's QCI 6. No other carrier actually has a QCI 6 except for AT&T. Other carriers do have QCI 7, 8's their baseline, and then they have QCI 9, which is the lowest priority. So that's the order it goes in. 8 is the baseline, then you have 9, and then above 8, you're going to have 7, which is higher priority than 8, and then AT&T has level 6, which is higher priority than 7. That's the way it works. Who exactly is on QCI 6? That is FirstNet. That's first responders. All right, government agency type accounts. Okay, so who exactly would be on this? Well, let's say there's law enforcement. Let's say that there are firefighters. Because they are on the first net account status and they get QCI6, they get the highest priority. Not only do they have highest priority, they also have preemption on these tower sites when they connect to them and there are times of emergencies. So literally users can be booted off of tower sites in the priority access given to those first responders and law enforcement agencies. I do believe there's also some medical professionals that could be on this tier as well in terms of FirstNet. So there's a lot of different instances that could kind of be included in this, but I just wanted to throw out some examples so you guys know, you know, how exactly that works. What exactly is QCI 6 in some kind of like numerical fashion? Well, if QCI 8 is the baseline, that means that QCI 6 has four times the priority access in terms of the capacity on a given tower site. So Individual A is a first net, first responder of some sort, right? And then a uh, regular consumer plan, less priority on the network at that moment in time if they're using them at the same time. So if there are, you know, constraints and the data on the tower site is being used, the bandwidth that's available is getting used, uh, you know, there's a lot of users on there. That's how much more capacity will be afforded to a QCI 6 compared to a QCI 8. It's also important to note that AT&T's network is pretty daggone intelligent. They have like band switching. And of course, with first responders, you know, trying to put those users onto band 14, locking them in. That band is important because it was afforded and given to AT&T for the sole purpose of building out a first responder network, which is essentially, uh, 
you know, a separate core, a separate network access that runs on all of AT&T towers on their network, but it does kind of do so on its own, uh, given its own access. So it is technically its own type of network experience. It's different than traditional consumer or even business customers on AT&T. So it'll switch between band 12, band 14. It'll kind of do that. That's all based on the network and how that operates, uh, whatever those algorithms and those programs are set in place. And then there's another thing that actually there's a setting on some of these accounts called Fast Track, uh, where an agency operator of that account can go in and activate Fast Track, and then it gives some additional speed boosting and priority boosting for users on that account. QCI 7 has two times the capacity of what you would see on the baseline QCI 8 access. QCI 7 is consumer elite. QCI 7 is business performance plans. This is what you wanna get if you're trying to have something higher priority than say a QCI 8. Again, 8 being the baseline, 7 gives you kind of like a one up to kind of give you a more premium experience. Obviously those plans are a little bit more costly and uh, they actually demand a higher bill. So you'll be paying for that priority access. The next is the QCI 8. All right, so what type of plans would be on QCI 8? This would be your consumer plans, uh, kind of starting with like the middle plan. Uh, for those of you that are aware, you've got like the starter unlimited, then you've got the middle tier, right? The, uh, the extra plan, and then you have the elite, which is at the top. Elite's at QCI 7, and then you kind of get the extra right there in the middle. That's QCI 8. I wasn't able to kind of pinpoint this, but I do also hear that the business starter plan I think that one might be QCIA. Don't quote me on that, but I think it might be. And that would actually kind of make sense, giving business tier a little bit of priority. Even though it's the entry plan, it does kind of make sense to give business customers that little bit of priority. You know, they are paying more money per line, so it does make sense. The next is QCI 9. So this one is going to have a slightly lower priority than the QCI 8. All right, so who's on QCI 9? This is your starter unlimited for your consumer side. This is going to be your prepaid. This is going to be Cricket. Uh, this is going to be all those MVNOs that have AT&T access. They're all on QCI 9. I do hear that there might be some MVNOs out there that actually are possibly on QCI 8. I can't prove or disprove that. I haven't tested it personally. I haven't seen it. But it's possible if they were to have some kind of an agreement with AT&T to be on QCI 8, especially if they're on a bucket plan or tiered data, like in terms of you know buying 5 or 10 gigs of data, since you're not in a, on an unlimited plan, maybe they can afford them that. Um, I don't know of any offhand, but it's possible that might be the case. One example of this would be Boost Mobile. We're hearing that they might be on QCI 8, which is different than what we would perceive based on kind of like the QCI rules, which put prepaid and MVNO at QCI 9. But here's the thing. If those lines have business access, like enterprises and business, well, then it would make sense that they could have QCI 8. And it's even possible they could have QCI 7 if they're treated as business lines. Don't quote me on any of this, it's kind of speculation. I just wasn't able to pinpoint anything. I'm just going off of some of the testing that people within the community have shown me and kind of seen the priority access in their experience. Where does that put AT&T hotspots? Where does that put the tethering data, the hotspot data? All of that on QCI 9. As far as I know, tablets are also on QCI 9. Although I have seen less deprio on tablet lines sometimes, it's not really consistent enough for us to say conclusively that we know for sure. So if I ever do make a follow-up video to this and I find out, I'll definitely disclose that at a later time. One important thing to note about those tablets and those iPad lines is they do have, I think some of these older plans and maybe the current ones too. There's like a 22 gig usage soft cap, which I think you may actually have higher priority data early on in your usage. Like so that it could be QCI 8, but then after that 22 gigs of usage in a month, during your billing cycle. Once you go over 22 gigs, it might slow you down and put you into QCI 9. That's very possible. That kind of, we have to make sure that we remember that any plan that has any type of threshold of DPRIO, you know, after certain amounts of usage. So some plans are like 22 gigs of usage. Some are 50 gigs of usage. Once you surpass that specific threshold of usage. So let's say for example, you're at 50 gigs of priority data access. Once you go over that during times of congestion, moments where the tower has a lot of data traffic on it, you're going to see the phone kind of act and behave with less priority. It may be shifting dynamically, kind of pushed into QCI 9 
because you've already gone through your prioritized data allotment. So getting over the 22 gig threshold, getting over the 50 gig threshold on certain plans may push you into a lower priority access. That's in the terms and those types of language that's, you know, when you buy these plans, you'll see them in the fine print. And of course, AT&T has been known to do this in the past. They will throttle or and or deprio heavy data users. So if you're using 500, 800, one terabyte of data each month, the system does flag those accounts. They do flag those users. And in those types of situations, those users can either become, you know, for the most part, completely deprioed and pushed into QCI 9, no matter what their plan is. They could be QCI 7, they could be QCI 8, but if they're abusing the network, AT&T will probably aggressively deprio your data or possibly even, you know, start to throttle. And I think with habitual abusers, you're even likely to probably get your account terminated. They don't want to see people using multiple terabytes on a plan. Mobile networks are not really built for that, at least not currently. That capacity just isn't there. And they don't want to have several other customers have like a degraded experience just because one person or a couple of people are ultra heavy data users that are abusing the terms of the service. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, you know, give this video a like, share it if you want to kind of get this out there and see if somebody wants to know how QCIs work and how these levels of priority work. Uh, to be honest with you guys, I would expect this to change with the, you know, generational shift over into standalone 5G. There's going to be more capacity on air. There's going to be new technologies. There's going to be different types of plans with different types of latency and downlink commitments and uplink commitments. It's going to change everything. This is currently how the AT&T network is programmed. This is currently how the AT&T network behaves. And of course that could change in the future. So just be mindful of that. You know, I'll definitely do a follow up video if things do change. So. Make sure that you are subscribed to the channel. You turn on the bell notifications so you don't miss any future episodes or follow-up videos to things like QCIs. Thanks for being here to watch this. Um, check out some of the links in my description box. Uh, this was a request by a Patreon supporter. If you want to become a patron of the SMT, there's a link in the description box below. You can support us there. Get early access to content and exclusives not found anywhere else. And also my email and my Twitter handle are in the description as well. So... Thank you guys for being here to watch. I hope you enjoyed the video and we will see you all on the next one. Peace.